Okay, so now that uh, we've got the table, we're satisfied that it's running close to true. Uh, it's time to work on getting this column to where it runs close to true. That's the next step. And in order to do this, I've turned my granite plate up on end and taken the level, my precision level, and gotten the square to match the bed ways as best I can so that it roughly looks like it did when it was doing the traversing. And now as an additional check, I've got my Starrett 18 inch, no this is 24 inch precision rule. Uh, this was new, I bought it a while back uh, just to have a, a precision, the best, this is the best square I got probably. I don't have any precision squares, so that's how we're gonna do it. I mean, I guess this granite cube's a precision square, but you gotta have it square flat before you can say that it's square. So since we don't know that that's the case, we'll have to use this to verify this to verify this. It's the best I can do. So here's the light. Got the square up here. And I'm pushed over firmly against it. We'll look for light. See the little light starting to come through. Starting to come through. And we've got light coming through all the way to the top. However, I can tell you when I do this on the other side, I get the same result. So my precision square is apparently not square or there's a hump in the table. Take my thigh and a half filler gauge. Yep, it won't go in. It pushes the rule. Yeah, maybe it will. Catch is right about there. Around the uh, eight inch mark. So let me check the other side and see if I get about the same. So on this side, I'm catching between the nine and 10. I'm gonna say that's uh, good enough. I don't know if I could get it any better. Uh, well, it suggests if anything for the column to lean back, I guess that's so the tooling and everything as it's stuck out the front uh, doesn't make it nose over. If anything, it just makes it come to level. It's all drawn in right now. So uh, the way that this square is leaning uh, should match to have the column lean back, you know, not very much. I mean, we're talking uh, Very small amounts probably less than a half a thousandths over that length I guess I could calculate it, but That's uh, it's as good as I can get it with the tools I got so Let's uh, put the indicator on here and see about cranking this thing around to get it to run true we're gonna leave the block where it's at. Anyway, I've currently got it set at uh, five thou. Remember these are numbers or the thousandths marks on this indicator. We're reading tenths per division. So, I'm gonna fire this thing up and we'll raise it up and see which way I need to go. Two thou out over distance now, looks like, on that axis. I 
lane this way now. So we're looking for less than a thou fall off, pretty much. almost two, so I guess I have to go a little more. Two or three tenths maybe it might be leaning back right there, so I'm gonna leave it. Call that good. I have to see where we're at on this side. This will be the last axis check finally after getting everything square and perpendicular as close as I can get. Let's see how we are here. Alright, let's run it back down. I've still got the block in this same square position. Let's indicate the top. Well, no inspection will be complete without an inspection of the spindle, of course. So uh, I got my tense indicator set up there on the, the uh, spindle sleeve, which is measuring the bearings and the spindle itself. Uh, not what the actual ram does. It goes in and out. So this is all beat up pretty bad. You know, it's got uh, 80 years worth of pecker tracks on it. So it uh, it's probably better than what it looks like on this dial. You can see most of the time there it stays around two to three tenths, except there's one spot there that it jumps up. Still probably less than a half a thou, which is good for a machine like this, I think. Uh, it's not uncommon for me to see a thou and a half to three on the Cincinnati on the spindle. But uh, let's check the ram. So this one's obviously got a big nick on the ram. You can see that thing. drops down, still within a thou and a half probably, even with that big neck in it, but for the most part. I'd say less than a thou. Well, I'd have to say that I'm pretty excited about how those alignments have turned out. Uh, I'm happy with it being under a thou over two feet and all the axes. And, you know, I don't know how much it is over its full travel. I'm going to have a good way to gauge that at this point in time. And maybe sometime I'll have a big giant block that I can machine on it just to test it out and see, make some big parallels or something if I come up with the material for it. But uh, I have to say, I'm also not too terribly happy about. My digital readout. It uh, put the wires back together, and now instead of having two axes working, I have no axes working. And I've tried unplugging it out of the digital readout to see if I could pick the other axis back up. And uh, I've been all the way to the top of the travels on this thing. I didn't have it turned on at the time, so I don't know if when it got 
on the travel somewhere or if somehow I got messed up. Uh, I can't see anything on the scale. I pulled it out. It does look like uh, the one I fixed the wires on has got a piece of glass on the reader head and the other one uh, when I took it apart there's no piece of glass in it and I couldn't find where it fell out so I don't know if it didn't have it when it was working or if it's fell out sometime since it was working here and that I just can't find it or what the deal is fortunately I've got some viewers that have some extra parts of these that they have taken off in the past and they're sending them to me and I'll see if I can get this thing patched back up and working but I'll show you here this will be the X and we got nothing and this should be the Y and it just goes 0505 so neither of them is reading for whatever reason I don't know what made it quit and can't tell I don't have an oscilloscope so all that fancy electronic checking out stuff I don't really have a method to do if it was mechanical I could fix it but electronics are kind of a hopeless deal don't have the tools for them I did take my voltmeter and check for the 5 volts and it is showing the 5 volts on it so it's getting power to the reed head and apparently has a ground or it wouldn't show 5 volts so other than that the mill seems to be working so I guess I just have to run it the old school way with dial indicators and height gauges and just forget about the readout. So thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing. I'll catch y'all later.